Scanning for audio. Welcome to an experimental Tin Dog podcast. It's experimental because the microphone's strapped to the front dashboard of my car while I drive somewhere. Yes, I'm that desperate to podcast. I'm willing to take up time doing anything without endangering the, you know, driving. So if my mind wanders at any point during this, please forgive me. I'm also, as you can probably guess, doing this without notes because reading notes while driving really would result in an accident. So let's see if this works. Of course, I'm shouting, which means the auto-level thing will probably cut in. Basically, this time, I'm so desperate to talk about the fourth wall. Coming soon from Big Finish Productions, Doctor Who, the fourth wall. What the crazy? Something's interfering with the signal. Doctor, I feel weird. What? You're, You're fading out. Oh, now don't. Where am I? Not right away. Oi! Don't worry, I'm coming! Ladies and gentlemen, I give you the very first episode of my new TV programme, Laser. Hey! You've got someone your own size! I'm not leaving you! Go! Get help! There he goes! Kill him! Who are you? What an unusual machine. You're a spy and I'm calling security. I am not a spy. You know this man. He calls himself a doctor. Doctor, say. Oh, I know. The doctor's here. He could interfere with our plans. Follow them. Subscribers get more at bigfinish.com. Now, Colin Baker. Yes, I know he's been around a while. And he's the Colin Baker to, you know, every single podcaster in the world. But he's got a new companion now. Flip. And to be honest, is she a new companion? Is she somebody who breaks the mould? Or really, do you need to be sticking with the mould itself? I'm just not sure. This is, after all, only the third story she's ever done. And only the second story is a full-blown companion. And also, I don't want to spoil anything for anyone, but in this story, she's not really in it that much for an extremely good reason, which again, I don't want to spoil. So what can I say about the fourth wall that won't spoil things? Well, first off, it is so, so much better than you think it's going to be. The cover has the word laser on it, and let's face it, any sci-fi with the word laser on it's meant to be a bit dodgy and a bit disappointing, which is fine because the thing it's referring to actually is supposed to be a bit dodgy and annoying. How can I sum it up in one really clear sentence? Ah, I've got it. This is Doctor Who does Galaxy Quest. Basically, it's going to take the mick out of itself, science fiction and Star Trek. Now, obviously, when Doctor Who does something, uh, for example, a Doctor Who does Quatermass in The Demons that we've just, um, just reviewed recently, Or was it several months ago? I can't really remember. In those stories, the original concepts and ideas as put forth in other people's works are reworded, reworked and reintroduced to us in a new way. Similarly, here we have a very, very Doctor Who take on the ideas put forward in Galaxy Quest. I'm, I'm banging on the Galaxy Quest door too much. Think more world of fiction and yes that's ringing alarm bells with a lot of people as well historically speaking just like stories with time travel stories set in the land of fiction are also just well a bit lackluster and annoying not this one not even remotely it opens with a very nice piece of retcon just in order to introduce the whole concept taken straight from the first doctor's time with the space time visualizer or is it the time and space visualizer As I said, I'm not exactly working from notes here. 
As I said, the doctor's using his time space visualizer in order to watch a cricket match, in black and white, on a round screen. Which is fair enough. And then, of course, there's something wrong with the interference on the signal. Split to the other narrative, where someone is using the same sort of technology only backwards. Something that puts the viewer straight into the centre of a TV programme. Yeah, nothing can go wrong with that. <coughs> Westworld. A perfectly safe environment. Immersive TV. We've had stories like this before, but nowhere near as good. The most important part of this plot, and one that's been structured and written so brilliantly, is the use of the cast. The basic premise, again I'm back to basic premises, is that the original narrative, the one on the TV programme that you can be immersed in, has been recorded like you would any normal TV drama, admittedly in 3D using specialist equipment. Now this specialist equipment is of course of alien origin, allowing characters, once they've been created and filmed, to have a perfectly reasonable existence inside the TV. When they're not on camera, they're doing the sort of things that you wouldn't really want to be doing on camera. Heroes cannot be killed. Bullets bounce off them, even bullets of infinitely strong and indestructible villains. As I said, the genius part of this is that this narrative... No, the cast is split very elegantly in two. Almost everyone, except the Doctor, is playing two parts. They're playing the part of themselves the rather inadequate actors and of course they're playing the parts of the characters the characters that they were playing in the sci-fi drama laser that have been brought to life so dramatically of course things go wrong and people escape from the tv the way that you would expect them to in a situation like this where was i ah yes the concept of the actors playing two separate roles is inspired you see in galaxy quest you've got one actor pretending to be the original character but here we've got the actual character coming to life now you would think on audio that this would get somewhat confusing but as the villains of the piece are largely well two-dimensional and the genuine actors are as three-dimensional as well as an actor can be there really isn't that much problem it gives you a lovely chance to ham it up and there are some fantastic lines literal moments of joy in this things that you've thought about Doctor Who in the past and other sci-fi shows and you've thought yeah I'll let you get away with that but I know what you're playing at well here it's the reality and it's marvellous Flip's a great companion all the other rest of the characters they're just so well done basically what I'm saying is ignore the cover and ignore what you think the fourth mall might be like just enjoy it go for the ride and love it for what it is. Right, I'll leave you now and leave this experiment of car casting to one side. And very soon I'll return and be talking about probably a Doctor Who DVD. So until next time, be seeing you. You have been listening to the Tin Dog Podcast. Doctor Who and its associated shows are all trademark of the BBC. No infringement is intended. Contact us at tin-dog at hotmail.co.uk.